Are you ready for the rapture? All around us, prophecy is being fulfilled and the stage is being set for the prophesied events of the last days. For instance, the Bible prophesied in the Gospels that the world in the last days would collapse into the same kind of moral chaos that prevailed in the days of Noah and Lot. We can see this moral chaos rapidly spreading in the world around us like gangrene. And this iteration of moral chaos in the world shall end in judgment just as fiery as that which destroyed Sodom and just as global as that which covered the planet in Noah's day. The Bible also prophesied in Ezekiel 38 and 39 that Russia, Turkey, and Iran would forge an alliance in the last days along with many other allies and invade Israel. We see this alliance rapidly coming together. We see the acrimony that Turkey and Iran have for Israel, and we see Russia arming her allies and building up her own forces in Syria. In the near future, this Russian-led juggernaut will attempt to invade Israel and will be destroyed by God. The Bible prophesied in Matthew 24 that famines, pestilences, and earthquakes would precede the coming of the Son of Man as labor pains precede birth. Lo and behold, scientists inform us that earthquakes have been increasing in frequency and intensity over the past few decades. The Bible prophesied in Daniel and Revelation that the Antichrist will rule the world with an iron fist during the second half of the 70th week. And he would force men to take the mark of the beast, without which they cannot buy or sell. Not surprisingly, we see the world around us is racing towards a cashless economic system and a universal tracking and social grading system. These tools will be wielded by the Antichrist when he forces the entire world to participate in his one world government and one world economic system. Folks, may I remind you that if you find yourself on earth in those days and take the mark of the beast, you will be consigned to hell forever. You are sealing your eternal fate. So if you find yourself in that awful time, please, please, please refuse the mark. Far better to lose your life than to lose your soul. Now this stage setting that we see going on in the world tells us that the most momentous day in world history since the birth of the church is on the horizon and racing toward us. I speak of the rapture. In Revelation 3.10 we read the precious promise, I will keep you from the hour of trial which shall come upon the whole world. This means that the church will be taken out of the world prior to the judgment on the world. No other interpretation is possible. Notice that the awful hour will engulf the entire globe. There will be nowhere to hide. So you either get removed from the planet or you are in the hour. Now the rapture will shake the whole world. Tens of millions of people from every nation on earth are going to mysteriously vanish in a moment. Virtually everyone on the planet will have family, friends, or workmates who are among the missing. Hundreds of thousands of witnesses will have seen one or more disappearances with their own eyes. The story will dominate the media. The powers that be will try to bury it, but the dent in the world population will be way too big to ignore. They will be forced to admit the disappearances and embrace some pseudoscience lie to explain them. If anyone out there finds themselves on earth after millions of souls vanish, go read the rapture account in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verses 13 through 18, Revelation 3:10 and John 14 verses 1 through 3. In the twinkling of an eye, we went to be with the Lord. How much time do we have? Not much. Several biblical considerations suggest that it will almost certainly happen within the next few years. It could happen this year. It could even happen in the next few days. We can't know the day nor the hour, but we can see that the stage is nearly set for the world's last act. Folks, there is nearly universal agreement among those that interpret prophecy literally that we are on the home stretch. It is time to kick it into high gear and sprint for the finish line. This brings up the question raised by the title of this video. Are you ready for the rapture? What do I mean by ready? First of all, are you saved? Are you born again with the new birth that we read about in the New Testament? Your church membership, your baptism, your confirmation, your catechism, your charitable giving, 
your social efforts, they are all beside the point. John 3.3 3 says, Unless a man is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Ephesians 2.8 and 9 adds, By grace are you saved through faith, and this not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Works are not in the salvation equation at all. Not religious works, not good works, not religious ceremonies. Secondly, if you profess to be born again, does your profession line up with reality? I draw your attention to the parable of the ten virgins in Matthew 25, 1 through 13. Then the kingdom of heaven shall be likened to the ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Now five of them were wise and five were foolish. Those who were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them, but the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. But while the bridegroom was delayed, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight a cry was heard, Behold, the bridegroom is coming, go out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. I prefer our lamps are out. But the wise answered, saying, No, lest there should not be enough for us and you, but go rather to those who sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him to the wedding, and the door was shut. Afterward the other virgins came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Assuredly, I say to you, I do not know you. Watch, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. Notice that only half of the professing believers are truly saved. Notice that the five foolish virgins understood that the bridegroom, that is Jesus, was the way of salvation. They knew what they were supposed to believe. They regarded themselves as believers. They got up to trim their lamps when they heard the call that the coming of the bridegroom was at hand. But they had no oil. They did not have the Spirit. They were not born again. They had a profession. They had no possession. They had superficial religion. They had no reality. Don't be one of those who knows Christianity is the right way to go. Give some lip service to the faith, but never get serious about it. You don't want to be a foolish virgin. You don't want to be on the wrong side of the rapture. You don't want to be left behind. Now, I don't want to discourage tender hearts. If you are concerned about your sin, if you really are fighting and resisting your sin, be encouraged. If you are going forwards on the difficult path of perfecting holiness and the fear of God, be encouraged. Fighting and going forwards are indications of the presence of the Holy Spirit. Only the Holy Spirit presses the battle incessantly and consistently against the flesh and the world. But if you are indifferent to your sin, indulging it and defending it without compunction, you do need to worry. Thirdly, assuming that you really are born again, does your discipleship begin and end with forsaking things that are intrinsically wrong? Where is your concern for truth? Where is your concern for doctrine, devotion, and discernment? Where is your labor for the kingdom? Notice that at the judgment seat of Christ, see 1 Corinthians 3, for instance, you can be saved yet have your entire life efforts burn up as wood, hay, and stubble. So how is your life, your service, your devotion going to fare when it is placed in the fire? Are you living more after the pattern of Timothy who labored with Paul in causes with eternal value? Or are you more like those of whom Paul complained all seek their own things, not the things of Christ Jesus. Folks, the rapture is bearing down upon us. Soon the trumpet will blow, and it will be time is up for every man on the planet. Every true believer will be gathered in the clouds, his earthly course over. All the unsaved, including many who dabbled in Christianity, will be left behind. The game of life will be set for tribulation mode, except that it won't be a game. And for those who go up, there will be no more opportunity to lay up treasure in heaven. There will be no more opportunity to exchange their wood, hay, and stubble for gold, silver, and precious stones. 
So are you ready for the rapture? If not, do whatever you have to do to get ready. If you are not saved, get saved. If you made a profession that is going nowhere, get right with the Lord. If you have forsaken your wickedness but see room to up your discipleship game, get with it. Get after it. You have one short life to be a good soldier of the Lord Jesus Christ. You have one long eternity to be a fulfilled human being.